Hello Hair Tools users, in today's episode, we will be creating hair textures to use on hair cards. So first, we're going to open a new Blender project. We're going to go to the Hair Tool pane, and we're going to click on Open Baking Scene. Go ahead and click OK. OK, so here's the default baking scene. If you go into Cycles, you can see we have a d Diffuse, Ambient Occlusion, Normal Map, Root Map, ID Map, Flow, Direction, and Depth. To get started, I delete the following particle hairs and leave just one behind that I'll customize. Okay, the next thing I'll do is I'll move this particle system over to the left. This will be my first layer. I'll be using four layers. Layer zero will be the blockout base layer, layer one and two will be the breakup layers, and layer three will be the flyaway layer. This is going to be used as the blockout layer to cover the scalp, so you will need this to be almost at 100% opacity. So first, I'll adjust the particles to add some randomness. I'm going to go into Particle Edit Mode, hit 0 on my numpad, go into my Comb Tool, go to Tool, make sure my Preserve Strand Root and Length are checked, and then I'm going to go ahead and change my Strength and Radius. And then I'm going to go ahead and select random particles by hitting L on my keyboard over the particle that I want to select. And now I can go ahead and comb these to give it a little bit of randomness. And then you can hit Alt-A on your keyboard to unselect. Go ahead and go back into object mode. And now you can see your result in the render window. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the child amount. I like to go into the opacity setting so I can get an idea of what this is going to look like in cycles. Another method I use to help with the opacity, because this one has quite a few particles, but yet it's still pretty transparent. I'm going to go ahead and go to the roughness settings, and we're going to change the roughness. We're going to uncheck the use roughness curve, and we're going to go ahead and uh, add some more randomness to the roughness. And as you can see, it's pretty much 100% opaque now. I'm going to attempt to uh, lower the display amount of children so that it doesn't take up a lot of my CPU power. And then we can go ahead back into the roughness again and add a little bit more. See what it looks like in diffuse. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so now you want to go ahead and copy and paste this particle system to create your layer two. Or we're going to call it layer one. This is going to be the zero for the blocking, and this is going to be layer one. And now we want this to be a little bit less dense. So we want to change the particle count for the children. Now let's go ahead and <clears throat> go into cycles and go into opacity so we can see, get a better idea of what the opacity looks like. That looks about right. I want to add a little bit of randomness to it. So we're going to change the particles around a little bit by going into particle edit mode. If they're selected, you can hit Alt A on your keyboard. And now we can move them around a little bit here to give them some randomness. And then you can hit L and select a few or one.
Go back into object mode to see how it looks. It has a slight curve to it. I don't like that, so I want to straighten it out a little bit. Okay, we can change the length so that it's a little bit longer by going to object mode and clicking on the particle hair. S, Y on your keyboard, and then just move it down a little bit. We can do the same thing for the first one. Now I'm going to, again, copy and paste to create my third layer and reduce the particle count and add a bit of randomness to the layers. I'm going to do the same thing for the fourth layer as well. I'm going to speed through this part since the steps are the same. Once you're satisfied with your textures, we can go ahead and bake out the maps. Prior to baking, we can actually change a few settings under the diffuse, opacity, normal map, and so on. If you go to Diffuse, you can change the color. I'm going to go ahead and choose... I'm going to choose a dark brown. If you go to your Opacity map, you can change the root, how you want the root to appear, by changing these settings. These are the settings that I use, and you can customize those as you see fit. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and bake out the Diffuse by clicking on Diffuse, changing this to... changing the padding to automatic padding, transparent background to solid background. I want to keep the format PNG, ultra settings, 4096 for the resolution. You're going to choose your file path and you're going to hit bake. Once the diffuse is done baking, we're going to move on to the next map. City, you're going to set this to transparent background. We're going to change the padding to zero, fixed padding zero. We're going to leave the settings the same and you're going to click on bake. Okay, here are the hair textures after they've been baked out. Here is the diffuse. We can go into 100% and we can look at it up close and you can see the individual strands, which is nice. And we can look at our opacity map, which is actually, um, I got my opacity map, which it, it bakes out this way and then you can add your black background. I don't like the kinks, so you can definitely spend more time working on your textures in order to get a higher quality result. This was done pretty quickly as a demonstration, uh, but these are our textures that we baked out. And of course you also have the option of baking out the other textures as well, the ambient occlusion, normal map, root map, random ID mask, flow, direction, depth. I usually start with the diffuse and opacity, and when I'm ready to add it to my actual hair texture in the, a program that I export my hair into, then I'll go back and I'll render out the rest of these textures. All right, that is the end of this episode. The next episode will be on making a simple hairstyle using Blender hair tools. See you then.